In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the Warnings Next Generation plugin in Jenkins. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. As an application developer, you might be using tools such as FindBugs, PMD, CheckStyle. There's numerous static analysis tools that are available for you within a Java ecosystem or in numerous other languages. However, previous to Warnings Next Generation, you would have to install separate plugins for each of these tools in order to get visualizations for what happened within that tool. Warnings Next Generation gives you the ability to aggregate all of those visualizations under one umbrella. Here's our starting point for today. I have a Jenkins controller version 2.277.3. To it, I have an agent connected to it with the label of Linux. We're going to work our way through an example here, so hang out with me here for a few minutes. We're going to start with a multi-branch example. So I'm going to click on new item. And then I'm using multi-branch sample app. We've used this before. If you haven't seen the videos before that uses this, that's OK. We're starting from scratch, so you'll be able to follow right along. Got a multi-branch. And let me grab my branch source and get. Okay. And now let's go ahead and click on Save. Now, as it scans the repository, it's going to find numerous branches. The one that we're going to focus on first will be our main branch. So you can see we actually have a main and a warnings ng. At the moment, this Jenkins controller does not have the warnings ng plugin installed. Let's go ahead and go take a look at the repository. I'm on the main branch, and within my Jenkins file, I have just a single stage. I'm doing a Gradle W, clean check, no daemon. And then I'm calling JUnit in my post always. So no matter what happens, this is the command that's going to run on my main branch. So now we're on our main branch. Let's take a look at what happened here. So we ran our Gradle clean check command. We had a failure with one of our tests because I have a failing test within the job. And then it recorded the test results because that was the JUnit step. So if we take a look at the detail page for one, we can see that the test results are right here. And this is just the JUnit representation. This is just classical JUnit within a pipeline. So I had a failed test. I expected faults, but it was true. It's just a contrived example because I wanted a failing test. There's one passing test, as we can see, represented within the blue with two tests, and we had one failure. So I'm OK with this. But I also want to add to this job the ability to run check style. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back over to our repository. And let's flip over to our warnings ng branch. And before we take a look at the Jenkins file, I want you to take a look at the build Gradle. Now, whether you're using Gradle or Maven or Node, your, your tooling is going to be different. But in my case, I added check style to my build.gradle file. And that's the only thing I had to do in order to make check style available to me. So now let's take a look at our Jenkins file. So everything is exactly the same up through the point of JUnit, but we added this one step for record issues. Record issues is the step from the warnings next generation or the warnings ng plugin. So we can see here that we're going to use some Java tools, check style, and I give it the location of where the output of the check style report is, and then just report encoding. Again, I'm only using check style extra, well, and Java, if you want to be technical, but check style is the one that I'm targeting for this run. Now, if we go take a look over at our job as it exists, if we go to warnings ng, we see this one also failed. 
And the reason why this one failed, if we get all the way down to it, is we actually have bad code in here. So it's not even able to compile. Instead of it being a return, it's a returns. So I messed up. I have bad code in my repository. And we can also see here that there's no such DSL method. Let's take a few moments and get our Jenkins controller set up so we can actually run with the Warnings Next Generation plugin. So how do we do that? Well, we need to install a plugin. So let's go to Dashboard, Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins. We'll go to Available. I'm going to type Warnings. And you will find Warnings Next Generation. At the time of recording, the current version is 9.0.1. I'm going to check this box. I'm going to download now and install without restarting. Now what you'll see here is Warnings Next Generation pulls in a couple of other plugins. There's an analysis model, there's a forensics, and a data tables API. So these are all required dependencies for Warnings Next Generation. Let's go ahead and do a restart. While we are waiting on that restart to complete, let's take a look at the plugin page for Warnings Next Generation. You can see here at the very top, it collects compiler warnings or issues reported by static analysis tools. This is a key part. It collects warnings or issues. It does not actually do the analysis. So if you want to be able to have check style results, you actually have to have check style available to you to run. That's what we'll see in a few moments. The other thing to recognize here, and I mentioned it earlier, is the, the Next Generation Warnings plugin replaces the whole Jenkins Static Analysis Suite. In other words, it makes the following plugin, plugins obsolete. Android Lint, Check Style, Find Bugs, all of these. These are all now no longer necessary because of the existence of Warnings Next Generation. And again, just to reiterate, this plugin does not do the static analysis for you. It just visualizes the output of those tools. Before we get started, again, looking at our controller, let's diff our Jenkins file between the main branch and our warnings ng branch. And you can see here, the only thing that we've added is the record issues step. Okay, let's go ahead and head back to our controller, which is right there, and let's log in. Let's go ahead and go run our warnings ng and let's see what happens here again. Go to multi branch, we'll go to warnings ng and let's do a build now. So the only thing that we've done is install the warnings next generation plugin and its dependencies. Let's see what happens. So we're running our Gradle clean check. There's our Java compiler checks for record issues and also our check style from record issues. Java compiler is Java. Check style is check style. Okay, now let's go and take a look at the output from warnings ng. So we clicked on the detail page, in my case for number two, and we can see here that the static analysis shows two warnings, and there's also this triangle. We'll come back and look at the info after a while, but let's click on two warnings. You can see that we have two errors. We have a donut chart here, and we go to issues. So we have details of this. These are the issues. I have hello controller 11. It says returns is not a statement. Well, we already know that. That just means I was fast and committed and didn't even bother to test it locally. We can also see that we also have another one here that from a Java perspective, it's like, hey, you're missing a semicolon. Actually, the semicolon is there. It's just because of returns is failing out. So this one is sort of a red herring. So I'm not as concerned about this one. But from a static analysis perspective, it is a legitimate error at this point. So let's go ahead and fix our hello controller problem. So I'll do source main Java hello control. Oops, com. And now, hello controller. And let's fix the returns and turn it into return. Okay, so there's that. Git add dot, whoops. Git add and dot. 
All right, and get commit dash m, and we're going to say fix hello controller. And now I'm going to do a get push. Okay, so now we've made that change up to our warnings ng branch. Let's go validate that real quick just to make sure we didn't do something silly. It's always possible when you're doing things live. So source, main, Java, hello controller, and now it's just return, hey. Now that we've fixed our repository, let's go and run the job again. Go back to warnings ng, let's do a build now. As it gets started, what we'll see here is another clean check. Again, nothing has changed in our Jenkins file. And now we had another failure, which we know about because we do have a failing test. But let's take a look at the output on three. Previously, from a static analysis point, we only had two warnings. Well, now we have, we actually had two errors, not warnings. Now we have six warnings, no errors, that's good. We have static analysis results from check style and the Java compiler. And also notice this information. We'll come back and look at that in just a second. Let's take a look at our warnings. Again, everything, donuts, fine. The trend line is moving up. Now, instead of issues, we have files, categories, types, and issues. If we were to click on to demo application, we can look at our checks, design, Java doc, and white space. Let's click on checks. And we can click into that and it says the parameter args should be final. Okay, well, thanks, that's pretty cool. Let's take another look here at design. We take a look there, we can see that utility classes should not have a public or default constructor. Okay, that's great. And we'll just take a look at whitespace because everybody writes Java docs, right? And we take one more look here at file contains tab characters. This is the first instance. Tabs versus spaces, your choice. This is where you would define your check style XML file for what rules you want to actually test with. Let's go back over here one more time and take a look at categories. We can also see here that we actually have two design issues. So the way to think about this is we have files and we can drill into a file and then look at what categories are within the file. This other tab starts with categories and then we can drill to files. We also have types, which are the types from, in this case, check style. And then any issues that we have, we can see these as well with their categories, javadoc, design, whitespace. All of this visualization makes it easier for you to track down what is going on in your code in case it's a compile issue. We took care of our compile issue, but now it's a check style issue for us. These are the corporate standards that we want to enforce. This is giving us an easier visualization to be able to track down those changes that we are going to need to make. Do you remember that information bubble that we saw? Let's go back over to this. So we'll go back to number three. Let's click on this information bubble. This is the place if there's any information messages around warnings next generation that you may need to deal with. In this case, it's informational, but you could also have errors. But I want to call out one thing the information gives us. If you look down here, you can see that we have a line here called creating SCM blamer to obtain author and commit information for affected files. There's no Blamer installed yet. You need to install the Git Forensics plugin to enable blaming for Git. Well, that sounds like a good idea. I want to be able to blame whoever the developer is, even though it's me. Sort of makes sense. So going through and understanding what's happening within this informational or warnings, depending on what the scenario is at your time, gives you the ability to dig through and figure out how to potentially make this even better and more useful. So let's go in and install the Git Forensics plugin. So again, we'll head back up to dashboard, manage Jenkins, manage plugin, available, and Git Forensics. We'll do that. We'll download now and install after restart. And once it switches over here, we will do our restart. Okay, now we're back. So let's go ahead and log back in. 
And let's go run our job one more time. We're going to multi-branch. We'll go to our warnings in G branch. And let's click on build now. Let's follow this along this time. We can see here that everything is completed. Let's go back over into number four. We still have six warnings, but you'll notice one thing here. We now have the SCM block showing up and it gives us the initial recording of 73 commits. The latest commit is this git hash. Let's go into our warnings because what you're going to see here now is we now have an SCM blames tab that we can look at and we can say that, oh, we can blame this one on Darren because he wrote this one. We can blame this one on Darren because he wrote this one. And you can look and see which commit that change went into. That's a pretty quick look at Warnings NG or Warnings Next Generation, whichever you prefer. If you don't have a standalone service or tool that gives you the ability to visualize all of the information that's available to you, consider installing the Warnings Next Generation plugin. It will help you in making your code that much better. Now, if for some reason a tool that you're using is not supported by Warnings NG, you can either define a new Groovy-based parser or you can provide a parser through a new small plugin. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.